Now let's take a look at fatty acids and how they might affect our health. But let's understand a little bit really quick, just a quick 15 second review. There's different types of fatty acids. They can have no double bonds. They can have one double bond or multiple double bonds. The double bonds can look like this with the H's on the same side or they can have the H's on opposite sides. This yellow box will explain that if you want to pause and take a look. Here are three examples of fatty acids. The words are blurry here, not because the video quality is low, because my ability to transfer images is low. That is why. But if we take a look at this one, just take a peek. This fatty acid right here, can you tell if this is monosaturated or unsaturated or saturated so you can tell if you look at this there's no double bonds in here these don't count that's the actual carboxyl group so we're just looking at this carbo hydrogen actually i'm supposed to say hydrocarbon chain hydrocarbon chain right here has no double bonds so this is actually a saturated fatty acid this one in the middle right here has some double bonds it has to be double bonds because we don't see these extra H's here. So this is going to be an unsaturated fatty acid. And actually, because there's one, two, three double bonds, we could call this one a polyunsaturated fatty acid. This one on the right, you guessed it, is a monounsaturated fatty acid. And these different types of fatty acids are uh, important for health and important for discussions. You might have heard of something called omega-3 fatty acids. People sell them in little uh, pill boxes like this, and a lot of people take them. We know it's essential. Essential means we must include this in our diet. Turns out a lot of fish oils have some of these things. People try to take extra omega-3 fatty acid pills, but there's not really any strong evidence that shows that taking all these pills is going to enhance your brain development and eye function. But nevertheless, uh, it's expected that you get this stuff in your diet. So if you're not a strong fish eater, then maybe taking some of these pills is an alternative for some people. So you probably heard some bad news from your parents or older people. I don't know how old your parents are, but your parents might talk about things like high cholesterol. They might talk about heart issues and eating too many fatty foods and causing damage to the heart and needing to really watch what they need to eat. Too many oily foods could mess with your diet and therefore your health. So it turns out that those people who are worried about this stuff are not so wrong. It turns out that coronary heart disease shows strong correlation with trans fats. And a lot of trans fats are not naturally occurring. These are artificially produced trans fats when people are manufacturing different types of foods. So when people take a look at arteries that get clogged up, they find out that a lot of the fat deposits in there actually contain a bunch of trans fats. In other words, lipids and fats that actually contain trans fatty acids. Remember what trans fatty acids are? Where the hydrogens are on opposite sides of the double bond. Who thought that one small difference like that could be correlated with such a serious health effect? So besides the trans fats, turns out saturated fats, where there's no double bonds, also show some correlation with coronary heart disease. That's what CHD stands for. But not all the data fits the correlation, and there may be other factors. With a lot of this stuff, there's new evidence coming out all the time. And you have to remember, this is one of the first things that we talked about when using statistics to help us analyze our data, is that not all correlation means there's going to be a causation just because two factors are correlated with each other and you can draw a straight line through them doesn't mean that one is necessarily causing the other so we have to be careful about that also collecting more data is probably going to be good larger sample sizes are always better to minimize the random errors that can occur uh, when you're only taking small sample sizes so finally you can take a look here's a little diagram that shows uh, once again, that trans fats have the strongest link to coronary heart disease. And that saturated fats mentioned here again could be linked, but not enough evidence. It could just be from low fiber or it could be other factors, could be some genetic differences as well too. So despite all this, don't be too alarmed. Everything should be taken in moderation. You should try to monitor what you're eating and don't overdo it. Another important thing to think about is that you actually do need some fats to stay healthy. And side note, I think this is mentioned in one of the other videos, but gram for gram, actually one gram of lipid produces more than double the amount of energy than one gram of carbohydrates. So it sounds like 
you could get away with eating the same mass of fats and actually get more energy than an equivalent mass of carbohydrates. But as you know, lipids are not soluble and your blood that's carrying all this stuff is primarily water. So you're going to introduce a lot more issues by relying solely on fats to get all your energy. That's why we can't do that. So think twice before getting the super mega size french fries.